The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. It tastes wonderful, it looks wonderful. But the big news about Kraft's new parquet is the way it spreads. Even when ice cold, new parquet spreads smoothly. It won't tear up a fresh slice of bread. It won't crumple thin crackers. New parquet is ready to spread smoothly the instant it leaves your refrigerator. Get Kraft's new parquet tomorrow in the new blue package. You'll love the way it tastes. You'll love the way it spreads. can pretty well control the average youngster's desires for a new this and a new that. But the law of averages doesn't seem to apply to the great Gildersleeve and his nephew Leroy because the boy usually gets what he wants. Well, let's see. This is October 15th, and then comes November 15th, and then December 15th, and ten days after that. Gosh, Bertie, I can't wait till Christmas to ask him for a new watch. Well, Leroy, what about the birthday angle? Oh, gosh, I've had three birthdays this year already. <laughs> <laughs> but you only got away with one. Yeah, but i got to get a new watch. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Evening, Miss Gelsleeve. Wish me luck, Bertie. Boy, you don't need no luck. Ever since you was born, you've been knee-deep in four-leaf clover. Hi, huh? Hello, Leroy. Did you have a good day? Well, it's rather hectic these days, my boy. The mayor's been calling a lot of conferences at City Hall. Yeah? Yeah, high-level, top-drawer stuff. Big brass, you know. Gosh, I'm proud of you, Unc. You're top brass. Well, I guess I'm about as brassy as they come. (laughs) (laughs) I've been waiting all day to get in this chair. Well, just relax, Unc. You deserve it. Want me to get your slippers? Well... Robe? Newspaper? Some warm milk? No, thanks, Leo. I'll just sit and sag. <laughs> okay, I'll light your cigar. Sure. Thank you. Mm. You're ah. welcome. Just want you to be comfortable. Yeah, I'm very comfortable. Unc. Yes, my boy? Aren't you going to ask me about my day? Oh, excuse me. How was your day, Leroy? I was late for school. Well, that'll happen. Forget about it. I don't want to forget about it. Let's talk about it. All right. Why were you late? Now we're getting somewhere. You left home in plenty of time. But I'm always late places. All on account of my old atomic jet watch. Your watch? What an old turnip. Look, the stem screws out. See? Oop. Leroy put that stem back. Okay, just showing you. And the crystal falls out. Watch this. Leroy, stop pounding your watch on the table. That's funny. It won't fall out now. (laughs) It did when I tackled Piggy during football scrimmage. Well, I'm not surprised. How about it? Can I have a good watch now? Now, Leroy... I saw some swell ones down at Mr. Peavy's. He's a friend of yours. Why don't you give him the business? Don't push me. Mr. Peavy might give you a discount. I wouldn't ask for a discount. That's the way friendships are lost. Okay, pay the full price. $29.95. What's the matter? Swallow some smoke? Nearly swallowed my cigar. Well, it's worth it, huh? 17 jewels and a Swiss movement. My boy, it's obvious that you don't know how to take care of a good watch. Pulling out the stem, banging it on the table, wearing it in football scrimmage. Oh, I got the worst watch in school. Let me put it up here so you can see how noisy it is. Huh? Mm. You see? You can't tell whether it's the watch ticker or somebody knocking on the door. Take it away, Leroy. Okay. But now you know what I have to live with. But for $29.95... I'm not putting out that kind of money for a watch right now. Well, when? Thanksgiving? No. Christmas? Young man, you're not ready for a watch like that. You'll get a good watch when you graduate from high school. When I graduate? Gosh, I may never get the watch.
Peavy's Pharmacy. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. This is Leroy. Yeah, hello, Leroy. What can I do for you? Mr. Peavy, has my uncle been in there this morning? No, but he usually drops in around this time. Swell. He almost watches you having a showcase. Yes, I'm pretty well acquainted with him. Well, when I comes in, I'll bet if you really try, you could sell him one. Oh? Does Mr. Gildersleeve need a watch? No, I do. <laughs> my, my. And if you could help a little kid in any way, I sure would appreciate it. Well, I... Excuse me, I'll have to hang up. A customer just came in, and I think he wants to buy a watch. Hello, Peavy. Oh, I get it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you? Nothing, Peavy. I'm not going to buy a thing. That's what he thinks. <laughs> Well, on second thought, I am thirsty. You might give me a Coke. Very yeah, well. You uh, care to move down the, to the showcase and drink your Coke, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, what's wrong drinking it here at the counter? Well, I have a little work to do in the showcase, and I thought you might like to see what I'm doing. Well, I'll move down. It's better than shouting back and forth. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Peavy, I've never seen such a junky-looking showcase. You've got everything in there. Well, if I put everything in one place, I know where it is. <laughs> Just look at that. Box cameras, fountain pens, Japanese fans, watches. Uh, speaking of watches, I'll just take my best value and put it up on top of the showcase. Beautiful watch, Mr. Gildersleeve. And only twenty nine ninety five. Just the kind that it makes a man, woman, or... Boy, very happy. <laughs> oh? I'll never forget the first good watch I had. It was given to me by, by, by my uncle. Yeah, I was his nephew. <laughs> I gathered that, Phoebe. After he gave me that watch, I thought the sun rose and set in my uncle. Uh-huh. Very reliable timekeeper. I doubt if I'd ever made it through pharmaceutical school without it. Peavy, I know this will come as a surprise to you, but the watch you're pushing is exactly the same one Leroy is trying to promote. You don't say. <laughs> Are you and Leroy in cahoots? No, I'm not in cahoots. I'm in the drugstore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That phone would ring now. Yeah, I'll answer it, Peavy. You have your hands on Oh, I can get it, Mr. Gilder. Now, don't worry. I won't frighten the customer away. I'll even talk like you. Peavy's Pharmacy. Mr. Peavy, did Uncle go for the watch? Leroy! Oh! Bertie! Yes, Mr. Gillespie, you're home early from the office. Well, it gets dark early these days, Bertie. I've always been one to follow the sun. Yes, sir. Right now, I'm on the trail of my nephew. Where is Leroy? Oh, he's out playing. He came home from school and asked what time it was, and then he raided the icebox and asked what time it was again, then went out to play. Oh? Miss Gilsey, what time is it? What time is it? Where's the little clock you keep here in the kitchen? Oh, Leroy took that so he'd know when to come home for dinner. Is he sharing a clock around with it? Yes, yeah, he's using it for a wristwatch. <laughs> a wristwatch? Well, not exactly a wristwatch. He took some adhesive tape and wrapped it on above his elbow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's carrying this thing too far. He says he can't trust that watch of his. Maybe that poor little boy needs a new one. No, Bertie. He has Peavy working on me. Don't you try to influence me. Oh, no, sir. Uh, Bertie wouldn't try to influence you. Of course, Leroy was late for school again this morning, but Bertie wouldn't try to influence you. Good, Bertie. No, sir, Bertie wouldn't try to influence you. Of course, if he's late at school too often, he may not pass this year, but Bertie wouldn't try to influence you. Well, all right, Bertie, don't. No, sir. Of course, that poor little boy tells me the stem comes out and the crystal comes out and he's on out with his teacher, but Bertie wouldn't try to influence you. That Leroy... He's lining up everybody on his side. Well, I can see through him. Aunt! Aunt, where are you? Aunt! In the kitchen, Leroy. Okay. Hi. 
Hello. Gosh, I made it home in plenty of time to wash for dinner, thanks to this reliable clock of birdies. Young man, get that clock off your arm and put it back on the shelf. Okay. But I was out playing, and you know how time gets away if you don't have a watch you can depend on. I'll bet you've just been waiting for me to come home so you could show me how you're suffering. Me? Yeah. And while we're on the subject, I must say I'm getting a little annoyed with your tactics. That phone call to Mr. Peavy, for instance. Oh, gosh, Yonk, I guess I lost my head asking Mr. Peavy to help me get a watch. Yeah, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Now, I won't say any more about it if you won't. Okay. I'll forget about the watch. I can take it. Take what? The cruel things they say about me at school. <laughs> Watch this. They say, there goes Leroy the dope. He doesn't even know what time it is. <laughs> Leroy, let's see your watch. Where is it? Here in my hip pocket. <laughs> hip pocket? Let me have it. Okay. You don't want this rot to run. You shouldn't carry a wristwatch in your pocket. Fix up lint and dust. What else do you have in your pocket? Salted peanuts. <laughs> Salted peanuts. They're in a bag. What if the salt sifts out into your watch? It would corrode the works. Ruin it forever. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, there's nothing wrong with this watch. With proper care, it'll last for years. Well, that's okay for you to say. You don't have to put up with it. By George, you're just trying to finagle a new watch. I'll wear your watch tomorrow and prove it can keep time. You'd wear my watch? To prove a point, yes. And if I can keep my appointments by it, do you agree to keep quiet? Oh, gosh, you could be checking it with other clocks all the time. Leroy, I give you my word. I won't look at another clock all day. And you won't ask anybody for the time? Well... No, I won't. It's a deal. I'll get it! <laughs> I'll go, Bertie. Well, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Gildersleeve. Come in, come in. I'm honored to have you call. Uh, I only have a moment. You Well, glad you dropped by, if only for a moment. <laughs> you remember my nephew, Mr. Mayor? Oh, yes. Hello, Gerald. Gerald? <laughs> <laughs> It's Leroy, Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes, yes. Gerald is the dog catcher's son. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Hi. Gildersleeve, I stopped in the water department at a quarter of five, but you apparently had gone for the day. <laughs> well, I had little water business to attend to on the way home. Yes, well, the water commissioner shouldn't make a habit of leaving early. It might leak back to me. <laughs> Very witty, Mr. Bear. Very witty. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> uh, Gildersleeve, uh, we're having a very important meeting to the city commissioners at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. On Saturday afternoon? Saturday afternoon. Oh, well, very good, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I had to let you know tonight to give you time to prepare your fall report. Oh, I'll be there with the report. I'm meeting Charlie Anderson at the reservoir at 10.30. I'll set up an appointment with the city bookkeeper for one o'clock. Good. I must be running along. See you tomorrow, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'll be there. You can depend on that. With my watch? Goodbye, uh, Leroy. So long. Ta-ta, Mr. Mayor. Dinner time! Coming, Bertie. Hey, Bertie, guess what? Unc's loaded with important appointments tomorrow, and he's going to try to keep them with my watch. With your watch? You bet. <laughs> We'll be right back. When you go shopping tomorrow, why not look for the one margarine that's really new? Look for new parquet, the delicious new margarine made by Kraft. One simple fact will convince you that I mean it when I say parquet is different. Here at last is a margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. You can prove it with your very first pound. Just store new parquet away in your refrigerator overnight, long enough to get really cold. Then whisk it to the table the minute your meal is ready. What a welcome surprise. Parquet slices into neat pats without any of the splintering or crumbling you'd expect. Then spread it. No trouble. No mess. 
parquet won't tear the freshest slice of bread. And the same craft discovery keeps parquet from running all over the plate when you leave it standing out in a warm kitchen. It doesn't melt down the way any ordinary table spread will. Your grocer now carries smooth, spreading, wonderful tasting new parquet. Look for it tomorrow in the new ice blue package. Each package has a picture of a cake of ice in the corner to remind you that Kraft's new parquet is the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Well, Leroy has been campaigning for a new wristwatch. And just to prove there's nothing wrong with his nephew's old watch, the great Gildersleeve is wearing it for a day. Of course, it's a day of heavy engagements for the water commissioner, but so far, things have worked out. This watch has been keeping pretty good time since I adjusted the regulator. Let's see if it's still running. Sure, strong as an ox. Seems it should be later than 2 o'clock. Wish I could check it with the clock. Yeah, but I won't break my promise to Leroy. Well, let's see where the sun is. Oop. Overcast. No sun. Yeah, I can't afford to be late for my appointment with the mayor. Why, George is a great temptation to take a peek at the clock on my desk. Hi, huh? Leroy. I didn't expect to see you down here. I just wanted to see how you're getting along with my watch. How are you getting along? Well, oh, fine. Great. Wonderful little watch you have here. Yeah? What time is it now? Well, uh, ten minutes after two. <laughs> Leroy, if you're trying to worry me, you aren't successful. Was I far off? Oh, I can't tell you, Unc. Remember our agreement. Yeah, yeah, and I've stuck to it. See, I even turned my desk clock to the wall. Well, it's still a temptation. Unc, do you mind if I put it in your filing cabinet? Not at all. I promised you I wouldn't look at a clock or ask about the time, and I won't. Well, let's lock it in the filing cabinet anyway, huh? If it'll make you feel any better. Okay. Oop! Turn off the alarm, Leroy. Oh, I got it. Hey, what are you doing with an alarm clock in your office? Well... You take naps, huh? (laughs) What if I do? A busy executive has to doze off once in a while to store up energy. Well, I'll put your clock in the cabinet. Suspicious nephew. So long, Hunt. Goodbye, Leroy. <coughs> well, no use denying it. Now I am worried about the time. This watch says 2.15. I don't dare be late for the mayor's meeting. I don't want to go in early either. You think I haven't enough work to do? Yeah, I know. I'll phone Paula. This is the day her bridge club meets at 2 o'clock. If she isn't home, at least I'll know it's after 2. <laughs> Well, she isn't home. Hello? Oop. Hello, Paula. Uh, this is Throckmorton. I didn't think you were home. Well, then why did you call? Well, because I was sure you were out. <laughs> oh? And if you were out, I'd know it was after 2 o'clock. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Throckmorton, are you well? Me? Sure. But I thought your bridge club was meeting today. We met yesterday. Oh. Now then, why did you call? Well... Vic, how about a date tonight? All right. Say in about uh, three hours and 45 minutes. What? That would be about six o'clock, wouldn't it? Oh, you're taking me to dinner. How wonderful. Dinner? <laughs> well, yes. Thank you, Throckmorton. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I didn't learn much there except I have a dinner date. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Hilda Sleeve. Oh, uh, Mr. Mayor. How long have you been standing there? Oh, long enough. But I wouldn't think of interrupting you while you're talking to one of your lady friends on city time. Well, I'd caught up with my work. I'm a fast worker. I gathered that from your phone conversation. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I guess it's about time for your meeting, Mr. Mayor. Shall we go? Gilda Sleeve, my meeting has been in progress for half an hour. It has. 
What excuse do you have other than your social activities? Uh, well, I got a little confused about the time. I watch here must be a little off. Gildersleeve, what is a city official doing with an atomic jet watch? You, uh, well, you see, Mr. Man. Where's the clock you always keep on your desk? Oh, you know, that's in the filing cabinet. <laughs> in, in the filing cabinet? Oh, oh, you must be joking. Nobody with the IQ of a gnat would keep a clock in a filing cabinet. Yeah, well, yes, you're right, Mr. Mayor. Glad you didn't take me seriously. Shall we go to the meeting? Darn that alarm. Kill the sleeve! <laughs> I won't be having dinner at home tonight. You won't? Yeah, you know, I should have phoned you, but I was tied up with the mayor all afternoon. Yes, sir. You and Leroy, go ahead. I'm taking Mrs. Winthrop to dinner. Yes, sir. Leroy! I wonder if I'm late. It's a great temptation to sneak a look at the mantel clock. And I can't fudge on Leroy. Still, I just happened to look in that general direction. Say, I wonder if I left my hat on the mantel by the clock. <laughs> Better take a look. No, it isn't there. But... Zeke, it's five minutes after six. I'd better get in the ball. Hi, huh? Get out of my way, Leroy. I have to shave and change my clothes. How's my watch running? Running a little slow, I take it. <laughs> isn't too angry. I don't know why I ever agreed to wear Leroy's watch today. I spent half my time tinkering with it. Still, it runs. Probably just needs more regulating. Why doesn't she come to the door? I wonder if I'm so late she got tired waiting and left. It might have been easier to buy Leroy a new watch than to go through all this. on earth is there? Hello, Paula. Turn on the porch light. It's me, Throckmorton. Oh, good heavens, Throckmorton. Yeah, I've been ringing the doorbell. Well, I heard it. But I thought if I ignored it, whoever it was would go away. Well, why should I go away? I'm here to take you to dinner. Well, I, I didn't want to answer the door in curlers like this. You're so early. Early? No, oh, no, I beg your pardon, but you're late. I am not. No, Paula, you just upset with me because I happened to catch you all tangled up with curlers. Tangled? Well, don't tell me I spent an hour on my hair just to be insulted. Oh, I didn't say your hair was that bad. <laughs> but you just admitted yourself you were ashamed to come to the door all wired up like that. <laughs> you do look funny. <laughs> oh, how can a man be so horrid? Oh, Paula, there's no reason to get upset. Go make yourself presentable, and we'll go to dinner. We are not going to dinner. <laughs> you back already, Miss Gill, please? Yes, pretty. What happened, Doc? Same thing has been happening all day. Nothing but trouble. I'm in trouble with the mayor. In trouble with Paula. Yeah? You mean you're having dinner with us instead of Miss Winthrop? Yeah, yeah, if I eat it all, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'll go set a plate. Aunt. Yes, Leroy? You couldn't be in trouble with everybody because of my watch, could you? Let's not rub it in. Oh, I wouldn't. I'm sorry you got in so many jams. I certainly do admire you. You do? I don't know of another uncle in the whole world who'd go through the day with that old turnip. Well. It sure double-crossed you, Unc. Certainly lowered my position with the mayor. What a phony watch. And I've never seen Paula so upset. She slammed the door on my necktie. Yeah? I wondered why it was so short. 
<laughs> well, fortunately, I had my penknife along. Unc, if I were you, I wouldn't have a watch like that in the house. Well... You'd be entirely within your rights if you tossed it in the fireplace. Right, George, that's the best suggestion I've heard. Here goes before I change my mind. Atta boy, Unc, you showed it. Well, I'm glad to get rid of that. Yeah. Of course, that was my watch you broke. <laughs> Say, it was. I got a new one now, huh? Yeah, I suppose so. That darn watch wouldn't even keep correct time long enough to get me across the street. I set it by the clock on the mantel, and I did. Hey, the mantel clock still says five minutes after six. Sure. So you wouldn't be tempted to check the time I pulled the plug last night. Oh! <laughs> Maybe that watch was running all right. Pretty hard to prove now, though. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. An ordinary table spread won't spread at all when it's cold. You've discovered that. But have you discovered Kraft's new parquet margarine spread smoothly when it's ice cold? New parquet won't tear the freshest slice of bread, even though you leave it in your refrigerator until you're ready to serve it. This is the margarine for you. Tomorrow, get Kraft's good-tasting, smooth-spreading parquet at your grocer's. Look for new parquet in the new ice blue package. Well, here's your new watch, my boy. Now run along. Yeah, I can't wait to show it to everybody. Thanks again, Unc. So long, Mr. Peavy. Goodbye, Leroy. <laughs> Peavy, there goes a happy boy. Yeah, I'm happy, too. That'll be twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's worth it. Leroy wouldn't be happy without it. <laughs> uh, take me now. I've been carrying this old pocket watch for 30 years. And I'll be carrying it for my lifetime. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I know it's a little old-fashioned and bulky, but it's handy for carrying snapshots. Mm, yeah. And it's a little tarnished. Compared to that sleek, gold-plated job. Yeah. But I'm happy with it. Naturally, a watch as old as mine could go haywire any time. Yeah. And like the mayor said, the city water commissioner should carry a reliable watch. It could be the difference between being commissioner and ex-commissioner. Yeah. And after talking Paula into another date, I want to be sure I'm on time. Well, yeah. Peavy, give me one of those new watches. You've talked me into it. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Great Gilda Steve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Stanley Farrar, Gene Bates, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into a perfect sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.